Hello Internet, welcome back to Daily Codes or welcome to Daily Codes if you're new here. In this video, we are going to set up Apache Airflow. According to Apache Airflow documentation, we can set up Airflow using any of these Python versions. But in this video, we are going to use Python 3.8 because Airflow is more stable in Python 3.8 currently as I'm recording this video. But in the future, you'll never know it will be more stable with this. But I found it easy to install Airflow in Python 3.8 than in any other versions. So um, here you can launch your terminal and move to whichever folder you want to work with. I am on my desktop and in the desktop here, I'm going to create a folder called Airflow. So this will be our project folder. Oh, this file already exists, so let me remove this. Um, minus Airflow. I already have a folder called Airflow on my desktop, so let me just remove it quickly. Then let me create a new folder. So let's move inside this folder and check inside it. There is nothing. Check everything. We don't have any stuff inside the new folder. Then the next thing is to explicitly define the Python version that we need to use for the project in this folder. And we have determined that we're going to be using Python 3.8. I'm um, using PyEnv to manage Python versions on my computer. So I will check if I have uh, Python 3.8 installed on my computer. So PyEnv versions. So these are the Python versions that I have installed on my computer. Uh, I have Python 3.8.6. So let me use that. PyEnv local 3.8.6 now if we look into this folder we are going to see a python version hidden folder then we need to set up our virtual environment so we're going to have python minus m vm vm was to be python minus m the env right then let's activate this virtual environment so as we have been activate then the next thing we need to do is to install the necessary packages for apache airflow but before then let's upgrade pip so I'm going to do pip install minus minus upgrade just to make sure that we have the latest pip that we shall use to install other packages. Upgrade pip. Then we shall follow this documentation on the guidance of how to install Airflow. So the first thing is to define Airflow home. According to the documentation, the Airflow home is inside the root folder, but according to our project, Airflow is inside the, the, the desktop. So if we do print working directory, this is where we want to set up our Airflow. So we're going to export Airflow home but we will export it to our working directory. So what I'm using here are not quotes, they are backticks. And then we can run this and check. So if I echo that variable, airflow home, we can see that it contains this path. Next, we need to set up the constraints that Airflow will follow plus the dependent the, the packages that depend on it. 
So let's start by defining the airflow version that we're going to use. As per the recording of this video, the most current version is Airflow 2.6.3. So I'm going to set up that here on my terminal. Then we need to set up the Python version variable. This will just contain the, the version of Python that I've defined for my environment. We can echo this and see which version is that. So echo dollar. Python version and we can see that it is 3.8. It is the same as the version that we have defined here. If we do pyenv versions, then we are seeing that this is what we have set, up, set as our Python version for our local folder on the desktop. Yeah, so it is the same as this variable here. Then the next thing that we need to do is to define the constraint that we are going to use with Airflow. So on my terminal still, I'm going to define the constraint and we can also try to look at what this constraint is going to result into. So let's echo this. And this gives us a URL to the constraints file. We can copy this and then paste it inside the folder just to have a look into the dependencies that come with Airflow as you install them. So here we have SQL Alchemy um, version 1.4.9. That is the version that works well with the Apache Airflow plus other packages. It's it will be easier for us to install Airflow this way than just doing pip install Apache Airflow. So it's better we define the version of Airflow that we're installing and the constraints that that version of Airflow comes with. So the next thing that we're going to do is to install um, Airflow. So this is pip install Airflow with the version and then the constraints. I'm going to leave the link to this document in the description so that you can click and follow along with me. This installation is going to take a bit of time depending on the speed of your internet. So I'm going to speed up the footage. The installation is complete. Um, we can check our folder just to confirm what is inside there. We currently have two folders inside inside uh, our working directory that is the folder defining the version of python and the virtual environment next is to create the necessary files when you run airflow version on terminal it is going to create all the necessary files for your project inside your airflow home so this returns Airflow 2.6.3 as the Airflow version that we have installed. But now if we do a list of, of things inside our folder, we find the necessary files that we are going to be working with. So the next thing that we're going to do now is to initialize a temporary database. So I'm going to do Airflow db in it this is going to create an sqlite database into our working directory so now if we list everything inside our working directory we can see airflow.db as a file that is created and this is an sqlite database that we are going to be using then the next thing that we're going to do is to create a user so we're going to type airflow users create and our username is going to be daily codes then the first name is going to be so first name is daily the last name is going to be codes then the role minus minus role is going to be admin then the email is going to be dali at codes 
Google.com. So we run this. Oh, I think I made a mistake somewhere. Let me see. So Airflow users create, then there should be username here. So let me this. So username, run that. First one, we're going to use Dali, one, two, three. Then Dali, one, two, three. So the user is created. The next thing we need to do is to run Airflow. You can use Airflow standalone but I would like to run the web server and the scheduler differently. So I'm going to create, to, to launch another terminal. Then I'm going to CD, let me make this bigger. CD into the folder that we are working with. So CD to uh, desktop, then Airflow. Then the next thing we need to do is to define Airflow Home. So anytime you launch a terminal, the terminal does not remember the variables that you defined in another terminal. So we need to define Airflow Home, basically. To export Airflow underscore home equals to PWD. Remember, these are backticks, they're not quotes. So when we enter that, then let's activate the virtual environment also in this terminal. So the end in activate. So we're going to run, uh, we're, we're, we are going to run the scheduler here. So we're going to do Airflow. Airflow scheduler. Airflow scheduler. So this term terminal will be running the scheduler. Then this terminal here will be running the web server. So we're going to run here Airflow web server. So the web server is running on this host. We can now go to the browser and paste that link there. The link cannot be reached. Let me copy it again. Let me see. Oh, it can be reached now. So our username was Dali Codes. And then this was Dali123. Uh, voila, now we have Airflow running on our local machine. We can now open another terminal. I'll be having so many terminals, um, but I can open a new tab instead. Michelle, new tab here. What I want is to launch VS Code. So I'll just do code dot. And VS Code is going to launch on that folder. We'll make it bigger for you. Then I'm going to open Airflow config. And I'm going to search for load examples. It will find load examples. And I'll change this parameters, parameter to false so that it doesn't show me these examples that we have here. These are DAGs that, um, that are showing. In the future videos, I'm going to show you what a DAG is and how to use them. But these are example DAGs. You can click into them and see how they look like. But currently, what we're doing, what we're doing is just a setup. 
So load examples false, that means that these ones will not show. Then we need to have also a folder called DAGs. So I'm creating a folder called DAGs here. And this folder will contain all our DAGs. So after, after setting up the load examples equals to, equals to false, let's restart Airflow. So I'm going to hit Control C here in the scheduler and control C here. Then I'm going to run the scheduler and I'm going to run the web server. So if we come here and we refresh the page, it's not loading now, it is loading. And we can see that there is no more DAGs here. Uh, that is because we have removed the, 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 the example DAGs. Yeah, so this is how you can set up Airflow on your local machine. In the next video, we are going to use Postgres database to, to contain our metadata. Currently, our metadata is contained in the SQLite database, which According to this warning is that it's not good for production. So it's better for all your setups to have something else that is not SQLite. So in the next video, we're going to do that. If you have learned something or if you've liked this video, please consider subscribing if you have not. And like the video, plus watch the next video where we're going to add Postgres database to this project. Until then, take care.